Hey everyone, Rose here, and welcome back to another video. For this video, I decided to redraw my character Silver. I originally drew him once in 2016 and redrew him in 2018 as one of the first videos up on my channel, so some of the real OGs might recognize him. Anyway, since then another two years have passed and I have improved a lot in terms of painting, so I felt like it would be a good time to draw him again. And depending on how this goes, maybe in, the, in another two years I'll paint him again and see how I've improved till then. I decided to do a bit more of a voiceover for this one, so I'll be sharing with you some of my thoughts behind the different decisions I've made and some of the changes between this one and the old ones, and also just kind of narrate a bit of my process. I hope you guys enjoy! For this painting I made a couple of pose sketches before I started. Usually I'd actually make full thumbnails, so I'd figure out the p composition and part of the background also before I start painting. But in this case I already knew I wanted the character to be the center point, so I didn't really bother to make a thumbnail, and just kind of figured the background out, out later on anyway. I used the rough sketches as a base for my proper sketch for this one. The sketching itself is also something that's changed a lot from my older paintings. I used to make like a really extensive sketch with several sketch layers before I started painting. Now I pretty much just have one rough loose sketch and I figure out the major shapes and proportions and the pose and then I go into painting and I make a lot of changes later on in painting. I, in some cases I actually completely remake a face or adjust the comp proportions and stuff. In this case I scaled the face a lot and also adjusted some of the proportions later on. So you can see me here figuring out all the different parts. You'll notice this sketch is really messy and it can be hard to recognize a lot of the things and my main point was really not to make it readable for anyone else it just had to be good enough where i can recognize where all the things are later on i was having a couple of difficulties with the bow so i removed it from my main sketch layer and just painted a new one uh, or rather sketched a new one with symmetry on so I could just move it around and figure out the position a bit more easily. Um, I also had a lot more references for this, especially for the pose, which is also something that makes a huge difference. For the old one, I really, really struggled with the archery poses, and I did too here, but I had a lot of, again, good references with people holding bows in a similar way so I was able to figure it out more easily. Now that I'm done with the sketch, I move on to adding flat colors and the background, which is also something interesting I've changed in terms of my technique. I used to just add the fl uh, flat colors and then make the background completely separately, and now I kind of add the background and the flat colors together because they really influence each other a lot, especially the background influences the colors of the character. And here you'll also notice that my lack of making thumbnail sketches beforehand kind of caused some difficulties because I really didn't know how to figure out the background. I just kind of messed around and struggled with what kind of elements I would put in the foreground and what kind of in in the background and like have the whole picture focus in on the character. Um, eventually I figured something out I really liked, which is the bushes around the sides with a bit of snow in the middle and a really dense dark forest in the background, which worked out well because it ha gives me a lot of contrast between the white character and the black background. And I messed around a lot with the trees also. I had a couple of references for this and I was considering having a little bit of the sky be visible above the trees in the back but that didn't really work out so I removed it later. And finally I'm moving on to the shading and 
flat colors, or rather the proper flat colors. I'm adding the colors of the leather and the colors of the eyes and I use a multiply layer for the shadows, which is something I've always done, including in my old paintings. And I also add a bit of an overlay layer for some slight highlights, though you don't really notice them in this image because um, the character is white anyway. Then I added an overlay layer on top of everything to add some color because it was really a bit too black and white and I wanted to add a bit more of this cool tone to everything. Um, and when I was satisfied with that I merged all this stuff down into three layers so I had only one layer for the foreground, one for the background and one for the character. And then I go into painting and this is a stage where I pretty much just grab one brush and um, render out everything. I use a color picker a lot to pick out colors and move them around and blend, which is why I only make very rough shadows early on with the multiply, because I can just take the color of the shadow I've gotten from that and put it into other places where I need shadow. And yeah, that's pretty much where I go on refining from there. You also might have noticed earlier I scaled the head again, and that's something I did quite a lot throughout this painting. I have a weird tendency to uh, make the heads too big, which is another very interesting thing that has really improved, uh, helped me improve my art, is getting critiques from people. So a lot of the time while I'm painting, every once in a while I sh um, share work in progress pictures to like a group of friends I have and I can get some feedback and critique and they really help uh, improve individual artworks but also overall just your art in general. So that's really something I'd recommend to find like a good community where you can get some good feedback on your art. Anyway, on to the actual painting. I messed around with the face a lot. I originally had his eyes look a lot like actual wolf eyes and I ended up changing them because I wanted it to fit more in line with my current style which is more humanoid eyes and I ended up I, I struggled quite a bit making them look right but they ended up looking really good and I'm quite happy with how they turned out and yeah I just you can see here I just continue color picking and moving around colors and blending and I pretty much only use one brush. You can see it down in the corner. It's um, a square or re rectangular brush with pressure opacity. It doesn't change size with pressure, which is the, what my old brushes used to do for the 2018 painting. And I've actually found that's really not useful when it comes to painting. There are only very, very select cases and at the very end when you're adding small details where you actually want the brushes to be a bit taper. So anyway, for the rest of the painting, I'm pretty much just going to continue doing what I've been doing now. So I figured I'd talk a bit about the changes I made uh, to the character himself and some of the yeah, differences to the old two artworks. So this artwork is different from the last two for several reasons. Uh, one of them is obviously just that I've gotten better and my style has changed a bit. Um, especially when it comes to like the proportions and the kinds of faces. Um, I was really still figuring stuff out back in 2018 and now I have a more clear idea of the style for anthropomorphic characters that I like. Um, and. But other than that, one of the real major things I wanted to change was the pose of the character. The design really hasn't changed much, it's just um, pretty much moved to be more in line with my current style. But the pose was something that I really wanted to change compared to the 2018 one. It actually kind of looks a bit more similar to the 2016 pose, except for the fact that for some reason in 2016 he was left-handed. Well, the character is actually supposed to be right-handed. I think that was just because I didn't have much of an idea about how people hold bows. But yeah, I in the 2018 one, he really had this animalistic, very feral-looking facial expression, and the way he was holding his bow, he kind of looked like he was attacking or 
angry or feral, and that wasn't really the kind of personality I imagined for this character, and um, yeah, I just didn't really feel like it would work well in this picture. And instead, I wanted a, it to look just more like tense, like he's prepared for something to happen and he's already like gripping his bow, but he isn't actively trying to attack someone. And I think that actually turned out really well for this one. I really like how the mood turned out in the resulting piece. And obviously he still looks kind of an animalistic, just based on the fact that he's an, an animal character, but like still, it's kind of different now. Other than that, um, the design has changed a bit uh, since both of them. Um, most importantly, I think, is that he doesn't have scars anymore, at least not clearly visible ones, because I felt like he has quite thick fur, so even if he has like scars over the place, um, they would be covered just by the fact that he has that much fur around them. And then I added these little feathers to their bow, which is something... Um, or his bow, rather. Which is something I had seen in some other artwork recently, and I thought it was kind of a funny idea to have these little feathers that indicate the direction of the wind so you can aim better. And I added these little ties to his uh, feet, that would give him a bit more protection. I don't really think shoes work well on this kind of character just because of the way they walk, but having something that still just protects the feet a little bit fe uh, felt like it would make sense, especially since it's so cold and snowy. And yeah, so that's the difference in terms of the, the, uh, in terms of the character himself. Another major difference to the last two, especially to the 2016 one, is the focus on the background. Uh, 2016 version didn't have a background at all really, it just was plain blue with a little bit of snow here and there. And that's something I changed in 2018. I put him in this forest setting, but if you watch the 2018 speed paint you'll notice that the background really isn't something I was thinking about a lot during the painting, it was almost like an afterthought. Um, for most of the time when I'm working on the character, the background isn't even on, which is really something that isn't a good idea, because if you have the background there while you're working on the character, you'll tend to end up with a result that looks more like the character actually in the scene rather than just glued on top. And that's something I feel like worked out pretty well here. And it's also good for the composition and stuff to have like a bit more of a plan. Like for instance, um, in this picture I have him standing in a bit of an opening, like a clearing. So he's in the light, so he's, his fur is pretty much fully white and the trees are dark and snowy, obvious, and dark but not covered in snow, um, which gives it this cool dark backdrop and really puts the focus on the character, which is something the, 28, uh, the 2018 version here yeah, is kind of missing, because I just added a multiply on top because I realized yeah the character was a bit too light for just the um, forest, and yeah that turned out quite awkward. So, at this point I am pretty much done with the character. I obviously still go in and add more details later on, but in terms of like the basic shapes and where the lights and shadows are, he's um, pretty much the way he's gonna stay for the rest of the painting. So I move on to the bow. Uh, the bow is actually also something I changed from the past two designs, or rather I actually put more thought into it this time. Um, because it's supposed to look like something self-made and I remember for the 2018 one it kind of had the ends of the bow bend back around and I figured that wouldn't be really be something that would be easy for someone to craft so I changed that around a bit. Then I was having a couple of issues with the arrows and keeping them on the same layer so I moved them up one layer to make it easier to manage. And now I move back to the background because I was I felt like the foreground especially was missing th something. I obviously had those bushes, and but they didn't quite feel like enough. 
and um, I felt like since it's a winter scene, it wouldn't be that much greenery in the front and there also should be kind of a reason why this is a clearing. So I added rocks and I also cropped the image. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I added rocks to the foreground to just add a bit more of something interesting and I obviously added snow on top of them because there are rocks on the ground surrounded by snow, so they should also be covered in snow. Um, but yeah, that all just added a bit more interest, I felt, to the um, whole scene. I also finally remembered to add a shadow and to add the feather to the arrow, which was something I had missed. I still kept forgetting to add uh, the feathers into the quiver for quite a while. I only add them fairly late on. And this is a point actually where I finally move to using one other brush, um, which is pretty much, it's very similar to one, the, the one I usually use, just with a bit more texture, which was nice for the snow because the snow obviously had this has this more sparkly and powdery feel to it. But so I still, for the most part, you know, even for stuff like the grass, uh, go back to using my main uh, brush, which I'll, it's part of a concept brushes pack. I'll link it in the description. It's a very good pack. There are quite a few very nice textured brushes and also obviously that one that I use most of the time. Though honestly, you could also make something like this pretty easily um, yourself. It's really just a square or rectangular brush that changes um, opacity when you change the pressure and um, has a little bit of texture to it just to make stuff more interesting. And here I move on to the background, which is... I was having some uh, struggles with that throughout the entire painting process, so I pretty much just went over it completely and started fresh. I obviously still stuck with the idea of having a forest in the background, but I messed around with, uh, with it a bit. I made it more misty and then I added the tree trunks to be pretty much straight and just a lot taller than they used to be. So you might notice throughout the painting I had these shorter trees where you could pretty much see the chops of the trees. And I just changed that to this huge, um, really tall trees. I don't really know what they're called in English, but we have them. We have quite a few of them here in forests. And they um, almost gives kind of like a poster effect to it. Um, but yeah, I feel they um, kept the background fairly simple. They, I didn't want that to be an extra bit of noise that would distract from the character. I just wanted it to be something there so it isn't empty and not, it doesn't look super weird. And yeah, I think that was pretty successful. I quite like how the background turned out in this one. Um, then I just fill in a bit more with the bushes and twigs in the foreground and go back into rendering. I, again, I try out a couple of different brushes to add a bit more texture and volume to the uh, fur and mess around with the leather and such. Um, yeah, here, as I mentioned earlier, I added quite a lot of um, extra fur texture. Um, another thing you might have noticed earlier on, which I think really adds to pictures, is adding a bit of a kind of vignette around the sides, which is just pretty much adding a bit more uh, shadow almost with a multiply layer to the corners of the image. I feel like it pushes the view towards the center and towards whatever you're trying to focus on. And I finally filled the quiver with arrows <laughs> after almost 20 minutes into the time lapse. And um, then I added his breath, obviously, which um, serves two purposes. For one, it's just like it's cold, so obviously you can see his breath, and then it also uh, helps um, with keeping the wind direction consistent since like his fur is going in that direction and the feathers are going in that direction. You can't really see much in the bushes but that's because they're so close to the ground and uh, just twigs so you wouldn't see it. 
And finally, I'm doing the last couple of tweaks and adding some effects. Um, you might have noticed the saturation kept moving around. That's because I added um, a couple of layers on top that just added a bit more color. And then I added a bit of a snow effect. And with that, it's done. I really like how this version of the painting turned out. I think I've improved a lot in the last two years. I think I'm going to do this again in two more years and see how I've improved until then. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed this time lapse too. I actually finished this painting quite a bit before I uploaded the video, just because I had to edit and stuff also. If you guys want to see the paintings when they're actually done, uh, feel free to join me on my Discord. I share work in progress, pictures, and the finished artworks before I upload the video. It's also a place where you can share your own art and get some critiques from the community. So if you're interested in that, I have a link in the description. Other than that, like and subscribe and such. If you have any other ideas for something you would like me to draw, feel free to leave them in the comments. I can't promise I'll necessarily make them, but um, it's always nice to get a couple of more ideas, and maybe I will. This has been my first time making a full voiceover for one of my videos. I hope it turned out alright. Anyway, that's it from me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you all next time. Bye!